Thank you once again, Mertes, for um, allowing me this opportunity. I'm so honored to be among my heroes. It's an amazing energy. What an amazing opportunity. And I thank you all for coming out to hear what we have to say about our work. Um, the story of my work is very, very complex. And I'm still grappling with a lot of the issues, because as we know, hair, how we perceive ourselves, how society perceives us as African American women is very complex. Um, my love for hair, my work with hair actually started from my mother. She always taught me how to style my hair and how my hair was of a great importance. And she's been braiding her hair ever since she was seven and doing like the whole community's hair. And, and she's like amazing. She could like braid your, head, braid your name into your head. Like, <laughs> she's just amazing. And she won't talk to you if your hair isn't combed. <laughs> she is really intense. <laughs> really intense. I'm like, Mom, you can't say that about me. You can't just do that. Like, the mom on her hair. She always taught me how to be viewed through the world through my hair and through the power that my hair can invoke. And so um, studying in Dr. Leslie King Hammond, her traditional African art forms course, I began to learn about the power of hair and how your hair is connected to God. And so when you style your hair, it's your statement to the world and all these things. So I'm calling my mother like, do you understand that when you braid your hair in a spiral, it means this and it means that. And she's like, what? I'm just doing it to look good. And so it's just, we began sharing all of this information back and forth and being empowered by it. But then in Leslie's class, I, um, she started talking about the power of hair and she began showing us these ethnographic prints of these women taken in West Africa. And at first I was like, wow, this is so amazing. I started looking at all these coiffures and just like, whoa. But then I began to notice that they were put into certain poses in which they were uncomfortable. Like, you know, the art history poses this and this and we're just focused on the breasts and certain parts of the body. So it began to make me uncomfortable. And so I started trying to figure out why these women were posed in the same poses that Picasso you know, emulated and all these things. So then I began researching how West Africa was colonized and how these French photographers began to come in and take pictures of these exotic African bodies and make these women hold hands, make them pose in certain ways, have certain backdrops. And that became very problematic to me because I felt that in society that I would kind of get the same treatment as that because I was beginning to be exoticized and fetishized. And me and my colleague, uh, Felicia, we went to Micah together. And we actually took a trip to um, Spain and Morocco. And when I was in Spain, as you know, it's a lot of immigration from Africa into Spain right now. And there is absolutely no person of color even sweeping the floors there. It's, it was just horrible. And so we actually um, got lost in the red light district. And we saw that the women, the West African women that are there, they had to become prostitutes in order to survive, which tied me back to a lot of the complications of how these women were treated in the early late 19th century, all these different complications. And because my, my hair was cut short, I guess, uh, they, they kept mistaking me for a West African woman. And so these men actually began exposing themselves to me and assuming that I fit this prototype. And so it's very complicated and complex and just, ah, oh, it makes you angry. But you know that there's healing in it. So simultaneously, when I'm getting treated like this, I've been collecting all of these images in the studio. So when I got that, I actually make headdresses and sculptures out of hair that climb out of the wall and take over the body. So I just began drawing that on top of on top of these ethnographic images. And something really interesting began to happen with the conversation and the, and the context in which they were used began to kind of change a little bit and be manipulated and pushed and pulled. And so the hair act, acts as kind of how we perceived in society and all the things that go on internally. So it's kind of bringing it outside. And sometimes the hair is restrictive and sometimes it acts as body armor for these women to empower them. 
So it's dealing with the complexity. Oh, can we go back to the next one? Sure. This is called a year from me to you. And so, of course, you can see and how they're just very stiff and firm, that they probably been made to pose in that way. But I wanted to kind of change the story and make it as if they were giving each other energy and supporting each other through this complicated um, situation. And so you can't tell who's giving the energy and who's receiving it. So there's this push and pull between what's going on. Um, and I don't know, this image, it's, it's complex for me because it makes me feel sad and then it makes me feel, um, I don't know, nostalgic for, for, for that sister bond and that love and that, that support and what I feel that we need to do with each other amongst all of this objectification and all these things that are going on. So they're kind of bound together by these strands that act as hair, but it, it can also be a silencer too, because I feel that we're perceived, in a, the way that we're perceived, sometimes we have no control over it. If people see you a certain way and they think you're going to be a certain way, then it's kind of like, not just their problem, because it's everybody's problem, but you can't let that be the best of you. You just can only be the best person you know how to be and move on, despite all those perceptions. And so that's just kind of what that piece is about. Is there one more? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So um, in a nutshell, that's um, kind of what I'm dealing with in my studio practice. It's really interesting because my mother wasn't encouraged to be an artist growing up in Louisville, Kentucky. She I went to school like right when um, desegregation happened. So she just dealt with a whole lot of racist energy and a lot of different things. So I'm living my art life through her. And so it was so amazing to send her the postcard from the show. And she's like, oh my God, it's my daughter. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And it's just, it's just amazing to feel her support. And as you said, your daughter's in New Orleans and my mother's in Kentucky. So it's like this kind of cross communication with like, I just feel her here and I'm really happy to be a part of this. But yeah, 